God loves me, he can do anything. If I run over here, if I run over there, God is everywhere and he loves me. When I look up, up, up. EKC Online Service, stand up to your feet and let's praise the Lord. Jehovah, Tambira, Tambira, Tambira. 
and praise the Lord. Welcome to Easy Cozy Show. My name is John Katha. I will be your host today, sitting in for my good friend, Angel Amani. Today in the show, we have our lovely guest, Stacy Mokeira, a member of TKC in Jewel's class, and her lovely mother, Lydia, a member of House of Grace, City of Transformation. Welcome to Easy Cozy. So, Mama Stacy, please briefly tell us how your journey is, was in House of Grace. Thank you, Joy, for hosting me to this show. I thank God uh, that he has brought us this far. It hasn't been easy, but it is, has been an interesting journey. I've seen God through this journey. Wow. Stacy, please tell us about your journey in TKC and how it has impacted you as a TKC member. Thank you, Joy, um, for giving me the, this opportunity to talk. Um, my journey as a TKC member has very has very been very interesting, very inspiring. Like it teaches me more about God and my courage in Him, and it has really made my faith strong. Yes. Our pastor has been preaching on the topic word power. Do you share the word of God as a family? Yes, we do. By watching online sermons that have been preached by our able Reverend Pastor Daswit Achero. We've been following his sermons through the screen and also on app here on our phones. Maybe God is using you as an encouragement to other parents. Tell us how you go about it. Well, um, uh, I switch uh, the TV on and uh, we go to, we use the YouTube channel. That's where we get the sermons from. So we gather together, watch online sermons using our home screen. Wow. What has been our key scripture? Our key scripture was Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. What has been the most interesting message of word power? The interesting message on word power is when the pastor said that the, power, the word can be very powerful, and it is also true. It can either build your life or destroy it. Yes. Wow. Here at Easy Cozy, we always like encouraging families to stick together and share the word of God together. Dear children, do you have a habit of sharing the word of God and praying together as a family? What would you like to tell our viewers before we close, Stacy? Um, my advice to people who are watching, mostly viewers, is that the word from the Bible is very, very powerful. Let us open our Bibles and master all the verses in every each of the book because some of them teach us more about God and maybe let's join the online classes to learn more about God. Thank you. We have come to the end of today's segment. As my pastor has been preaching, word becomes power when you declare, pray, and apply. We would like to hear more from you, so send your feedback here on Easy Cozy, and we'll be glad to read your comments and shout-outs. Till next Saturday, it has been my pleasure to host you. And now I hand over to my lovely pastor. Thank you very much, Joy, from the Easy Cozy segment. Wow. Oh. Lovely interviews, eh? 
Well, I, w I really want to appreciate each and everyone that has made uh, the transmission of this service uh, possible. Thank you for always being so committed and so passionate to the words of the ministry. May the Lord continue to bless you. Well, I promised you last Saturday that this Saturday we are starting a new topic. Well, I'm already excited about it. I don't know whether you are ready, but let me see if you're ready by showing me your stationery. Do you have your pen? Do you have your notebook? Uh -huh. Do you have your Bible? Can you lift it up? Lift your testimony as a Christian. Lift your Bible wherever you are. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bible and you know the book of Proverbs chapter 3, let's go there. Let's see who will be the first one. If you're there, just type, I'm there, pastor. If you're not there, you can say, I'm struggling. It's okay. We will wait for you until your struggle is over. The book of Proverbs is in between the book of Psalms and the book of Ecclesiastics. Hey! Are we there? Chapter 3. Uh, from verse 5, I'm going to read the two verses, 5 and 6. I want us to read together. This is a wonderful verse. I want you really to own it even before I read it. Listen to this. Listen to the word of God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, you've said in your word that blessed are the feet. You've actually said how sweet are the feet that brings good tidings. I want to thank you, Father Lord, for you have given us an opportunity again to bring the good news of Jesus Christ into the lives of our families, the lives of our children, and I want to thank you, Father Lord, because you have used me as your vessel yet another weekend to be able to, to preach the word to these children and to their families. I also want to thank you, Father Lord, because you have brought them in your assembly one more time that they may listen your, to your word. May you be a blessing to us by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may be able to hear and to remember everything that has been taught through Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are you settled or are you still fidgeting? If there's any one of you in the bed, I, I, I ask you to get up. <laughs> get out of your bed. It is bad manners to be, you know, in church in bed. This is church. This is uh, what the Bible says, a place that is called by God's name. So our topic that we are starting afresh is co is entitled my safety fast my safety first so for those who are five six years probably we do not know how to spell the word safety can we spell it for you all right sound s, sound ah sound f, sound e eh, sound t sound ya yeah. my safety First, so first let me start by explaining to you what is the meaning of safety. What does it mean? Safety is a condition of being protected from danger, from hurt, or from risk. It is a condition of being protected from harm, or from danger, or from risk. So for example, if you were passing somewhere in an estate and you came across a German shepherd that is out of control and it jumps at you, but fortunately it has a leash on its neck and the leash restrains, it means it can attack you, but because it has a leash, you are safe. Do you understand it now? But now you need to understand that there is a difference between these two words. There is a difference between safety and security. Now, if you were to ask me what is security, I will explain to you the, sec um, the meaning of security uh, uh, as I have studied in one of the versions of the dictionary. Security 
are things or steps taken to protect you or to bring things in control, into control. There are steps that are taken to protect you or taken to put things into control. And so to help us understand these two very, very well, I'm going to borrow a very nice example of a story in the Bible. The story of the three great musketeers that have been used as an inspiration to show God's protection when these three were in absolute danger. But God came through for me. I'm not talking about people you do not know about. I'm talking about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, we are going to watch it, and then thereafter, we shall have a good discussion. Enjoy. God's people were captured and taken away to the country of Babylon. The king of that country was named Nebuchadnezzar. Three young Israelites, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worked for King Nebuchadnezzar. But when the king wanted them to bow down and worship a golden idol he made, they wouldn't do it. We can't. Let's go. So the king called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true that you did not worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you a second chance to bow down and worship or no god will be able to save you from my power. Nebuchadnezzar, you certainly have the power to throw us into the furnace. And our god has the power to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not worship your statue. The king was furious and told his soldiers to heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in. But guess what happened? The men in the furnace didn't burn up. God sent someone to protect them in the furnace. The king was surprised when he saw four people walking around. So he told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the furnace. And the king made a new law. No one would be allowed to say anything bad about the God of Israel. Thank you. Did you go through the story? Did you understand it very well? It was so simple, very well animated. Some of you are just enjoying the cartoon. Me, I was following this story. I mean, look at this. This is a classic. Can I use the word classic? This is a wonderful example of showing the extraordinary power of God. I mean, let me ask you, how many of you have ever been burnt by fire? Maybe hot water, hot porridge, hot chocolate, a candle. How many of you? Show me by your hands. Just lift your hands. Type your hands up icon. You've been burnt. How does it feel to be burnt? It, that pain is, you cannot explain it in words. Eh? It, it's really bad pain. Now, we are talking about three young men that were put in a furnace 
that was protected. Can you imagine the furnace was protected so that when you are thrown in, there is no way you can get out. It was a highly protected area that the only thing that would come out is your roasted pieces because there's no nyama. You will be roasted completely because it was heated almost four times and over. In fact, the Bible says the bouncers, the soldiers that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace, they were burnt by the fire and they died. The amazing thing is as the soldiers died, these guys, the fire did not touch them. The heat did not burn them up until when they got inside the furnace. Let me tell you, have you ever seen a huge fire burn in a bush or maybe when you're burning papers? Can you imagine the way the fire is so bright? It is very hard for you to see where you're stepping or where you're going. But the most amazing thing about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is they trusted in God so much. They said, we will trust in God and we trust God will rescue us. And then they continue to say, even if he does not, we will still trust in him. Wow! Is that, is that amazing? And they were not very old. They were very young. And you know, but their faith was unshakable. I pray that your faith will be so unshakable that the things and the pressures and the attacks that come your way that would want to make you say, I cannot worship God, that threaten you to say, I'm not a Christian, that says probably, you know, that forces you to say, if you are a Christian, you know, we will put you in a lot of danger. I hope that your faith in God and your trust in God will be so tight, so tight that you will say, no matter what. I like the three musketeers because they said, no matter, they could see the furnace, but they said, no matter what, we will not bow down to you. We will trust in the Lord. How about that? So when they got into the furnace, their clothes were not burnt. Their feet were not burnt. Their hair, which is the most sensitive and close to fire, was not burnt. And guess what? Jesus appeared. And when he appeared, he walked with the three of them. And Nebuchadnezzar could see clearly there was a fourth man. The Bible says he looked like the gods. <laughs> they did not understand. <laughs> they did not understand. I don't know how they, they were able to tell he looked like you know, one of the gods. But one thing we know for sure, there is no other god. There is only one god. So it couldn't be gods. It was only one god. But because they did not have a good understanding of who our god is, they were caught in a lot of confusion. But because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew who God is, guess what? He appeared in their presence to make sure that they are not only protected, but they are safe. If you put your trust in God, child of God, God will make sure that you are not only protected, but you are safe. Wow. Hallelujah. How about that? So now look at King Nebuchadnezzar. He did not put his trust in God. He put his trust in his own self. He said, I am a mighty king. I can create things. Look at my wealth. In fact, I want everybody to bow down to you, to me, and worship me. Can you imagine bowing down and worshiping a man? And everybody bow down. Everybody but the three musketeers. And can you imagine when the security team came and they started threatening them and they brought him in the presence of the king? The king still forced them, you know, to bow down, but they said, we are not willing to betray our God. And do you know why? You know, I cannot put the king in a lot of judgment because the king did not have a personal relationship with God. He did not know the power that was in the God of Israel. But you and I know the power that is in the Lord God, the creator of the universe. God of Isaac, God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Israel. We know that there were 
people, our friends who are very sick, that the doctors gave up on them and they said, we leave this case to God. And after a few days, a miracle happened in the hospital and the medicine that was not working all of a sudden starts working. And those that were pronounced to die in a few days are walking out of the hospital fully recovered because they put their trust in the Lord God Almighty, I pray that you're going to give a testimony because of holding your trust in God so much. King Nebuchadnezzar did not know of otherwise. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew that there was otherwise. And their otherwise is the knowledge. They knew that there is only one God. And they were so faithful in the commandments of God. The commandment that says, thou shall not worship any other God. And so when the opportunity came to prove that they are faithful to the commandments, they were tested and they did not fail. There is a commandment that says, thou shall not lie. Very simple commandment. How many times have you fallen? And broken that commandment. Many times, isn't it? Yet you have a personal relationship with God. And you know the power and the might um, you know, of our God. Even after you've known that you have sinned. And broken the commandment of God. You are not even humble enough to repent and to ask for forgiveness. You want to cover that lie with another lie. Mm -mm, it's not a good thing. You're not putting your life at a safe area. You're putting your life in a lot of danger. And let me help you today. The best way you can bring your life back into safety is to repent your sin, ask God to forgive you, and give you a turnaround, give you a fresh start. And that way, you will move away from the unprotected area where the enemy lies to you and come into a protected area where the angel of the Lord encamp around you, where the wings of God cover you, where the hand of God holds you up and he calls you the apple of my eye. I pray that once you repent, that will be your story in Jesus' mighty name. Well, let me tell you something. As we'll continue with this sermon title, My Safety First, you will get to know of the so many things that you're protected against. You're protected against danger that you know and the dangers that you do not know. You're protected against things you've prayed and even things you've not prayed for. You're protected over things that are in the skies and things that are under the earth. You're protected against things that come to attack you from behind and things that come to attack you from the front. You are not only protected from the dangers that you can see. You are protected from things that happen even when you're sleeping. But because you put your trust in God and you've prayed and you have asked God in the mighty name of Jesus to protect and to cover you because of your faithfulness, the Lord is faithful to answer your prayers. And this is one of the reasons you're feeling safe in your home today. As I conclude, I want to ask you, child, can I ask you? Can I ask you this honest question? Do you really want me to ask you? Are you saying, Pastor, please, don't ask this question. Can you ask it? No, I want to ask it now. Are you ready? Tell me, out of these three categories of people, are you like King Nebuchadnezzar who trusted in his own strength, who trusted in his own muscles, who trusted in his own money, who trusted in his own army? Are you like him today? Are you the one who is telling everybody around you to pay attention to you? Not to do anything before you say it? Are you asking people, other children around your life, to bow down to you? Or are you like the citizens? Who, whether they knew God or not, they feared the king and they broke God's commandment and they bowed down. Or is it that you're the th among the th like the three musketeers? 
Are you like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? That says, no matter what, even if my life in danger, even if you want to put me in a furnace of fire, I will not break the commandment that says, thou shalt not worship any other God apart from me. I will be faithful and I will follow God's commandment no matter what. Which is your side? Who are you among the three categories? I'm waiting for an answer. Well, if you have answered, let me tell you, let me finish by saying this, that among the things that threaten us today and threaten our relationship with God, God is faithful. God knows what we are going through. God knows what we are going through. God knows, child of God, what you are going through. I want to speak to the girls right now because this has been a very hard time for our little sisters and our daughters. It's been a very hard time. Some of you probably, you're watching me from up country, a place where we do not have the kind of facilities we have in the city. Some of you, you're watching me and you know your family has been going through a very tough time. Affording some of those things and buy you some of those things you need, especially as a girl, has become very difficult. And there is something that is speaking to your ears and say, if you can just get a boyfriend, he will buy you those things. You've seen it all over the country the way, you know, girls have been put into temptation and traps have been set. And a lot of them have fallen for the trap. And unfortunately, some of them have become pregnant. Many of them are those that did not become pregnant because they needed a little cash to buy necessary things that are meant for girls. I don't know what it is that you're going through, my son. I do not know. But I trust in God and know God knows what you're going through. That there is Something that is being dangled like a carrot. The story of the carrot and the rabbit. And you're told, if only you can bite that carrot, your life can change. I want you to know that all these things are temporary. Most of these temptations, when you fall into sin, they put your life in total misery and others destroy your life forever. And things can never be the same again. But if you trust in God fully, the Bible says he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Can I get a good amen? Lord, make a way for these children. Those that are in need, my Father Lord, you say that you will meet our needs. You provide to our needs according to riches and glory through Christ Jesus. May you meet the needs of these children so that they do not turn to a king. They do not turn to a boyfriend. They do not turn to a relative. They do not turn to a fake helper who will promise them heaven but instead give them hell. See them through my Father Lord. See them through that they will not be lied to. They will not be tricked. Their lives will not be destroyed because they want to bow down to another power. Father Lord, may you protect them. May they feel safe under you. May you provide. Your word says that you will meet the desires of our hearts. They have desires even at an early age. May you see to their desires. You see to their desires. Even as they are lifting their hands, oh Father Lord. If there is any one of them that has been abused, assaulted, and they are hurting, they are keeping that secret deep inside of them because they do not want anybody else to know. They are feeling embarrassed about it. Father, heal them. Heal them and carry them by your hands. All those that are seated, may you stand up and lift your hands because you are finishing. Touch them, my Father Lord, and heal them. Heal their wounds. Things that cause them to cry at night and they cannot tell anybody. They are having nightmares and bad dreams because they were abused. Because their innocence was taken away. They have been taken advantage of. We know the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says, Jesus, you came so that we may have life. And he who will have life, will have it, and have it in abundance. May you heal them and give them life. Give them a second chance. May they feel safe again underneath your wings. 
In your arms, may they feel safe and accepted. Help them, my Father, Lord, to recover. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Can you put your hands together and appreciate the Lord? I have prayed for you because you couldn't tell anybody what you're going through. The secret is deep. It is dark. It is hurting. Some of you are almost feeling like giving up, but I want to encourage you that you're feeling, now you are safe. The Lord has heard your cry and you are safe. Can you put your hands together and appreciate the Lord? You are safe. You do not have to worry. You do not have to cry. Oh, hallelujah. Only him is able to forgive you and to give you a second chance. Do not lean in your own understanding. Do not lean on the counsel given by your friends. Well, as I finish, I want to ask you whether you've prepared your offering, whether you've prepared your tithe, we are building the house of the Lord, and we do not build the house of the Lord with bread. We build it with brick and mortar. We buy things so that the house of the Lord may look magnificent, like the church in Jerusalem. We may magnify it and make it look beautiful, so that even when you are meeting to worship the Lord, you are in a safe place, protected area. When it rains, you're not being rained on. When the sun is hot, you're not being scorched. When the enemies come, they find the place is protected. That's one of the reasons why we give. To build the house of the Lord. Well, is your offering ready? You're seeing the instructions being given there on your screen? Whether through M-Pesa or through the bank account? By now you know. But if you are a visitor, um, you go to the M-Pesa pay bill. The pay bill number is 361751. The account number is offering. If you're giving your tithe, you say tithe. And before you send, can I pray for it? Our dear Heavenly Father, to you we present our tithe and our offering, and we pray that you may receive it, O Lord. That my Father, Lord, you may do great and mighty things. My Father, Lord, by all act of us giving, may you remember us, O King Almighty. May you be moved. We will be touched. May it, my Father, Lord, create a safety zone for all these children and their families. By the whole act of giving at your altar, may you reach out and protect them against the dangers that they know of and the dangers that they do not know of. We bless your name for it is in Christ Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. You may send. God bless you. Well, we have come to the end of today's service. It has been a pleasure just allowing the Lord to speak to you, to comfort you, to strengthen you, and to help you feel safe in the hands of the Lord. Why don't you give us comments and feedback if you feel blessed, if your life has changed, if you feel comforted. Let us get to know how the word of the Lord is blessing you. Till next Saturday, may you have a glorious week. May you prosper in the ways of the Lord. May the angels of the Lord Put a wall around you and protect you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God is everywhere and he 